to today's episode of MD Lab. We are going to continue exploring nutrition. There's a lot of conflicting data about supplements and even if we need them. And if we do, how do I know if I need them? My goal is to present the information in the easiest format that I can. I'm a big science nerd and I like digging deep and reading all the journals and I love to listen to other podcasts about biohacking, but I do feel that most shows have an assumption that listeners have a science background. I want to assume nothing. I apologize in advance if I'm oversimplifying. I want to break down this complex material into bite sizes that anyone can apply. We are very unhealthy as a nation, as you've heard me go on about. And I'm here because I want to see that change. The change that can begin with each one of us by learning the facts and applying them to our lives. I have absolutely no problem with us putting medical insurance and big pharma out of business. If you remember, we looked at macronutrients last episode, carbs, proteins, and fats, and briefly discussed micronutrients. Today, we're going to start looking at micronutrient deficiencies. I'm only going to discuss D vitamins today. That is just how complex and interdependent vitamins are. Let's say we eat a half a cup of spinach. What nutrients am I even getting? The USDA Agricultural Research Service Food Data Central Search. You can put in a food and it will give you the complete nutrient breakdown, far beyond what you'll see on something like um, my fitness pal. So I put in raw spinach and it gave me a choice of 100 grams. 100 grams of raw spinach is equivalent to three and one third cups. And that is equivalent to a half cup cooked. It shows you the last year that spinach was analyzed by the USDA. And it also shows you the multiple locations of where the samples came from and the nutritional value that they give you is an average of these samples. I love that because we do know that our food quality, the nutritional density is being depleted. So this is a way that we can actually see the most current nutritional values for foods that we're eating. There was actually a landmark study from 2004 on this very topic. A gentleman named Donald Davis and a team of researchers from the University of Texas studied the U.S. Department of Agriculture's nutritional data from 1950 and 1999. They looked at 43 different vegetables uh, and fruits, finding reliable declines in the amount of protein, calcium, phosphorus, iron, riboflavin, and vitamin C over the past half century. Davis and his colleagues chalked up this declining nutritional content to the preponderance of agricultural practices designed to improve traits other than nutrition. Efforts to breed new variety of crops that provide greater yield, pest resistance, and climate adaptability have allowed crops to grow bigger and more rapidly. But their ability to manufacture uptake of nutrients has not kept pace with their rapid growth period. There have likely been declines in other nutrients too, he said, such as magnesium, zinc, vitamins B6, vitamin E, but they were not studied in 1950 and more research is needed to find out how much less we are getting in these key vitamins and minerals. Yet another study concluded that one would have to eat eight oranges today to derive the same amount of vitamin A as our grandparents would have gotten from one. This is also due to soil depletion and not allowing soil to rest as well as rotating crops, which allows crops to replenish soil that will optimize for another type of crop. 
Deficiencies in essential nutrients can have a significant impact on our overall health and well-being. And the fact that our vegetables and our fruits are so depleted of these micronutrients is a big red flag, especially when you consider a push for a all plant-based diet. We couldn't eat enough plants to get what we need. So we basically will just be eating enriched foods. Today, we hear a lot about vitamin D, omega-3 and magnesium deficiencies, but I'm going to postulate a different approach. When looking at the biochemical processes of the body, they are so interwoven that one deficiency can throw off the function of several other vitamins. Micronutrient deficiencies can have far reaching effects on our health. Unfortunately, they are more common than we might think. And as women, we are actually more susceptible due to various factors such as menstruation, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and menopause. Today, we'll take an in-depth look at the B vitamins. There are eight B vitamins that make up what is termed as the B complex. We hear a lot about vitamin B12 and folate deficiencies. We can also be deficient of the other B vitamins. And this too can have detrimental effects on our health. Now, before we get into the specifics of each of the B vitamins, we need to discuss a very special gene that's going to come up again and again. It's called the MTHFR gene. You can kind of imagine what the nickname is for that one. But this gene has what we call polymorphism or different variants. For us, just to simplify it, and this is how it is in the literature, is that it's the MTHFR CT variant. You know, each of your parents are going to give you a variant of this, this gene. You'll either get the C or you'll get the T. So there are three possible combinations that an individual could have. You can have the CC, and you get a C from mom and dad, or you could get a CT, so you get a C from one parent, a T from another, or you could have a TT. The TT, you have a T from mom and a T from dad. So the CC is the one that we consider, we'll call it common. It's the variant that functions the way that we would want it to. So CC, common, common. TT, it's trouble. When you have the CC variant, everything is a-okay. That gene is doing what it should be. The CT variant, is going to back some things up, slow it down a little bit. And then we have the TT, trouble, trouble, double trouble, right? You're going to get a significant backup. Now, depending on the population, it can be between 20 to 53% of individuals that may have inherited at least one T copy. We call them heterozygous if you have a T and a C. It's homozygous if you have both C's or both T's because homo meaning the same so both of your variants are the same and hetero meaning you know they're different so that's the easy way to remember but you could be homozygous C or homozygous T. In some groups as high as 32 percent of individuals have inherited the two T copies. We know from research that Mexicans have the highest rate of this, the TT variation. Caucasians are next and the prevalence of seeing that and African Americans are least likely to have this mutation. Dr. Ben Lynch, he's considered the foremost expert in the field of MTHFR genetic mutations. Dr. Lynch in his research states that the homozygous TT variant 
they have 70% loss of the function. Where heterozygous with the CT, they have a 40% loss of function. And unfortunately for these people, when folic acid is added to food, the, the synthetic fortified form, it can actually create some issues for people with the MTHFR mutation. Because this folic acid is easily absorbed in the body, but people with the low levels of that MTHFR enzyme, they can't convert all of that folic acid into the bioactive form. So they have a lot of this folic acid that is competing with the body's ability to absorb the actual usable folate. The body takes folic acid and converts it to folate using the enzyme MTHFR. Therefore, what little bit of enzyme is available, it, it's kind of backing it up and preventing the conversion that needs to happen because there's this excess of folic acid. It's so high, the amount that's in our diet and it's just not usable for a large portion of the population. What is meant to be a cure is actually an issue for these people. I'm one of those people. So I guess this is kind of near and dear to my heart. I had a DNA test and I opted to have the health portion done and it stated that I had a very high likelihood of folate deficiency. So I know they were talking about this gene plus I, and see where I have some of the, the markers of deficiency. Thank you for joining us on this biohacking journey. Stay tuned for more empowering episodes of MDiva, Biohacking, Your Feminine Potential. Until next time, take control of your health and thrive. The content provided in this podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. The information shared is not meant to replace professional medical guidance, diagnosis, or treatment. Listeners are encouraged to consult their personal health care professionals for advice and treatment plans tailored to their specific needs. The host does not assume any liability for the information provided in this podcast. Any actions taken based on the information presented are at the listener's own risk. Always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have.